Many IFR flights these days terminate in an RNAV approach using GPS for precision guidance. However, the use of the instrument landing system, ILS, which is ground-based and not satellite-based, is still in common use even in the airlines. For GA pilots, loss of GPS signal or failure of equipment is still a high enough risk to stay proficient on ILS approaches. There's one peculiarity about these approaches we need to examine though, the existence of false glide slopes. ILS approaches provide both lateral guidance in the form of a localizer and vertical guidance in the form of a glide slope. The glide slope seeks to closely mirror in instrument conditions what the VASI or PAPI does in visual conditions. It determines a correct angle towards the runway and provides indications of being too low, too high, or on glide slope. It may be an oversimplification, but we can think of the glide slope as two signals, one indicating above glide slope and another indicating below. They're aimed in such a way that where they intersect corresponds to the correct glide slope. Because they originate close to the ground, these signals radiate in such a way that the bottom one gets largely absorbed by the ground. The system actually works around this problem by having the bottom lobe of the signal bounce back off the ground as part of the overall signal. Glide slopes that use reflected energy like this are called image type, and there are different variations within this type, but the end result is that there are more signal lobes being transmitted than just what's needed for the proper glide slope. These extra transmissions create multiple glide slopes, which are traditionally spaced out at 9 degree and 15 degree angles contrasted with the traditional proper glide slope angle of three degrees. Depending on the type of transmitter used, these false glide slopes can either indicate a fly up or fly down signal to the pilot. But in all cases, even if you've captured one of these glide slopes, you'll be flying a much steeper rate of descent than is proper for the approach. Now, when you're hand flying the aircraft, this steeper rate of descent will be rather obvious due to the excessive elevator pressure needed to maintain the descent. However, with the use of autopilots coupled to the approach, it's very easy to be ignorant of what the elevator is doing unless you're focused on the vertical speed. For that reason, you should be aware of and even brief the proper vertical speed for the glide slope angle you'll be flying. Approach plates will list the glide slope angle for an ILS approach. This one uses the standard three degrees. A good rule of thumb is to take your ground speed and multiply by five to get the required feet per minute descent. So a 90 knot ground speed on the descent should yield about 450 feet per minute. Jeppesen plates will even list the exact feet per minute calculation for you. Beyond this, the best way to avoid intercepting or detecting false glide slopes is to intercept from beneath. ILS approaches list a glide slope intercept altitude next to the lightning bolt symbol. You should be at that altitude prior to picking up the glide slope. If you're higher, and we mean quite significantly higher, there is a chance you'll be picking up one of the fake glide slopes. So flying your autopilot coupled approaches, it's a great idea to brief your feet per minute descent and do your best to ensure you'll be at the glide slope intercept altitude prior to intercept, even though that's not always perfectly possible. For more training insights and full ground schools, check out the Flight Insight website linked here and in the description today.